Uncle Mark. Yeah, hold on. I'm typing. <laughs> uh, Just got fucking burn this guy down, you motherfucker. Yeah, what do you need? I, I, our, <laughs> it seems like these days many of us, our only window into the outside world is literally our windows or <laughs> the internet. Yeah. The internets. And a lot of us are spending a lot of time on the internet. And there's a lot to argue about on that there internet because the world, she's on fire. Yeah. This world is on fire. We didn't yeah. start the fire. I mean, it's been <laughs> always burning since the world's been turning. Yeah. Um, we, this is taking yeah. a very musical turn all of a sudden. I'm trying it's, to. <laughs> do you think that song's about Thetans? <laughs> we, we didn't start the fire, it was Xenu. Is that what that is? I think it's, I mean, it would be absurd to not think that's what it's about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, look, here's the thing. Uh, and I think it will shock our listeners to hear it. So everybody brace yourselves. Uh-huh. I, Uncle Dan, am not perfect. What? Well, Are you okay? Balderdash. Uh, okay. Yeah. I have been known on occasion to get things wrong. And sometimes very wrong. And that's fine. We all get things wrong. But sometimes when I get things wrong, I end up hurting someone or many someones. Mm. That, well, what, that sucks. What are we admitting to here, Dan? <laughs> what? Uh, well, I'm, this is, are you Dexter? Just wait, wait for it. It's, it's going to be good, I promise, right. by the end. It's not. Anyway, uh, it's about, uh, look. That feeling of hurting people because I did I fucked up in some way is about as bad a feeling as I know. And the thought that I hurt that thought that I hurt someone else, especially if it's someone that I love, which usually when you hurt somebody else, it's somebody that you love. Mm. But here's the thing about hurting someone you love: you have a built-in motivation to patch it up. You love them, you want them to feel better, and you want to keep living in relation to them. So. In those cases, for most of us, it's, a relatively, it's relatively easy to make amends. You know, we can overcome the demands of our own egos and listen to the other person. Mm. We can apologize. We, to, we work solutions out. We commit to doing better in the future. But what about when it's not a loved one? What, what about when we get into a dust-up with an acquaintance or a stranger? Mm-hmm. What, if we're, what if we're wrong then? Will we be able to hear it? Will we make amends? I guess part of what I, what brought this all up for me, and the reason that I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, arguing and specifically arguing online, is that I've been seeing a lot of people getting very upset on social media of late mm-hmm. over things like Black Lives Matter, wearing masks to stop the spread of coronavirus, etc. And you know, one person makes a statement. A few people agree, and then somebody disagrees, and the battle launches. Uh And look, it's nothing new. We're all used to seeing arguments and trolling on the internet. But these issues feel a lot more important to people than just, you know, standard politics or religion or, you know, who was the best James Bond. It was Woody Allen, by the way. (laughs) He actually did play James Bond in the original In a a movie called Casino Royale. Yeah. That... Uncle Mark, have you ever seen Casino Royale? Oh, of course Royale? I've seen that Casino Royale with um, oh my god with um, uh, Orson Welles and Peter Sellers. It's got so many, but like the the just the visual elements of it is yeah, as, are astounding. It's so a bananas I, movie. I thought of you the whole time I was watching yeah. it. Anyway, uh, these is, the issues that we're talking about now, uh, these Black Lives Matter issues, you know, coronavirus, all that stuff. They have literally life and death consequences for many people. So the stakes mm. are super high right now. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about how to have these conversations, what works, what doesn't, what our goals are when we have them, that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, the thing I wanted to talk about is what I'm calling the art of not war. Eloquent, <laughs> I know. It's Sun Tzu, only backwards. You have to say yeah. it like Seb Gorka. The art of not war. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Gorka! <laughs> Anyway, uh, look, I think one of the problems that we have, and we've talked about this on the show a bit before, is that most of the confrontations we see on the internet forums take useless shapes. They're not designed to convince any human of anything. The best case scenario is 
just a frustrated people agreeing to disagree. The worst case scenario is anger, hurt, name calling, vitriol, and even like threats of violence. So we're at the height of what is known as call out culture, mm-hmm. which is all about someone, uh, all about telling someone how wrong they are. Now, that's actually very important. One of the tools we have to fight things like racism is for people to realize that they will not be respected or treated well when they display hateful or socially unacceptable views or behaviors. At very least, people will think twice about their ignorant public uh, and uh, about their ignorance in public, and fewer people will either uh, will be influenced or hurt by their bullshit. That's all good, mm. but what won't happen is uh, w- almost certainly if someone is just jumped on when they make a statement, is a change of heart. So, sure, they might not say that type of thing in that forum again, but that doesn't mean that they've accepted that they were wrong. That just means that they've been silenced. And to me, that means that the people who disagree with them might have missed an opportunity. Because here's the thing. Back in, say, the George W. Bush era... The racists of our country were a lot quieter. They didn't Mm -hmm. speak their racism with impunity the way they have since Trump came along. But they were there. It's not like they were allies to black indigenous people and people of color. They just knew that their views couldn't be spoken in certain company. Now, for many of these people, silencing them is the best we can hope for. They're, They're too far up their own assholes to hear from anything from anyone who disagrees with them. But... There are some who could be turned from the dark side. There's still good in them. I can feel it. So let's talk about what that might entail. Uh, now, the first hurdle that I think we need to jump through uh, when we want to do more than just shut people up is realize that no matter how much we want this not to be true, having the best argument doesn't mean you win. It's rarely, it's rarely, rarely does it mean that rare. anymore. Yeah, it, 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 you're absolutely right. Like it, it, it seems counterintuitive, but how you argue, especially on um, social media platforms, is literally more important than what you're arguing, the point 100%. you're making. hundred percent. Yeah, it's, which it's, is crazy. It's, it's so vanishingly rare that someone changes their opinion on something that's important to them just because they hear a series of premises that lead to a sound conclusion. Hmm. That's because these conversations are not about ideas. As much as we think they are or want to think they are, they are about identity. 99% of the time when you tell someone that they're wrong, meaning that they're incorrect about facts involved, what they hear is you are wrong. Not your facts are wrong, but you as a person are wrong. You're unworthy. You're fucked up. You're bad. So it's really hard for our fragile little egos to stomach being incorrect about facts, but it's almost impossible to get over the blow of feeling like our identity is under assault. And that's the problem. These questions almost immediately become matters of whether or not each person's identity is acceptable. So, boom, suddenly you're in a war. Everyone dives to defend and attack. For instance, a post on Facebook about black lives and, you know, how they matter. Mm -hmm. It mentions the topic of white privilege. Now, we three woke-ass uncles feel like we have uh, listened to arguments about the subject and are quite convinced that white privilege is a very real and very very much something uh, that we have greatly benefited from at the expense of non-white folks. But... White guy X on Facebook feels the need to pipe up. He says, you know, black people have their own TV stations. They have their own movies. They have their own books. They have their own TV stations. Amazing. I'm taking this from a very real example. Oh, my God. uh, So they're the ones who are privileged. Meanwhile, uh, you'll hear a lot of people say, I was raised poor. I've struggled my whole life. How could I be privileged? Mm Mm-hmm. And then the internet collapses on them and they are destroyed. The point here is that uh, in or- what, what, what we're dealing with is a person who, is, who feels attacked 
not their ideas feel attacked. They feel attacked. The human being feels attacked. It's just, you know, and this happens on our side too. We, you know, this isn't just us attacking them. They attack us. You know what I mean? It, it, when, uh, and it's just as real as when someone says trans women aren't women. Mm-hmm. That's attacking their identity. They, you may think that you're just talking about someone, you know, about ideas, but you don't but we don't have the luxury if you want to actually communicate with another person we do not have the luxury of thinking that we can just separate ideas from emotions from from who we are because that's not how humans work hmm. so i think the best thing to do in these cases if your goal and again you know this isn't always the goal but if your goal is to actually like find a human connection that might result in new thinking, different thinking, you know, baby steps forward. I just think there are a few steps that we can take that would actually make a difference and that have, uh, and I'll talk about sort of an experience that I had in just a minute. Uh, One of the things that that I always like to say is that the best thing to do to convince someone else of your position is listen to them. As much as possible, don't lecture them. Ask them questions. Let them know that you're not there to attack them. You just want to understand where they're coming from. And it, in doing that, you, ha- you force them to sort of... You're, I mean, you're not attacking, but you're making sure that they are aware of what they're trying to... What, what they're actually saying. Because so let often... Me, let me... Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Go sorry. ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to back up a little bit more and just say, you know, before, you know, we... Because I think there are, and we'll talk about them, these, these tried and true practices that, you know, in just normal face-to-face conversation are, are good tactics to reach a conclusion, but are even mm. more necessary when you're not actually looking at somebody's face. You're, you, you know, your normal empathy triggers are not there. You're, right. You know, you, all you're seeing is words on a computer screen, whereas, you know, we are programmed to take cues from other people's expressions. And that's right. how we, you know, we can understand, oh, I just hurt their feelings or I'm making a good point and I can tell they're listening or, you know, this person is frothing at the mouth and I don't want to have anything to right. do with them or anymore. I, I, can, I can make a judgment about whether this person is either too young to maybe have the depth of knowledge I do or, you know, is, is, is uh, a vulnerable person of some kind who's just been fed some garbage and I right. should be gentle about this, right? So, yeah, right. But I, I would even back up a little bit further than that. And just before we go down that path, and, and this is kind of a point you made earlier, Dan, is what is, what is your purpose? Why are you on social media? And I, I for one, I, I've abandoned Facebook for reasons we'll talk about. I mean, I, I'm still, I, I still have a profile. And, you know, thank, uh, all thanks to our listener who set up the, the Facebook page for us for the How to Heretic. But I had to kind of excise Facebook from my life because it was not just a net negative. It was a net huge negative. Mm. Um, I was having flame wars with friends and family. I I was doing nothing but hurting feelings and having my feelings hurt. Nobody was improving. And I'm, you know, I've tried to, to downplay. It's really hard not to have social media in your life at all. But can anyone argue, and I would ask both of you this, has social media been a net benefit or a net negative to our species? I think that's hard to quantify because I see a lot of both that ha- that can come of it. Yeah. I know that a lot of people don't see a lot of the benefit that comes from it, but I see a lot of the benefit. That I see benefit, but I don't know that, you know, I, I, I can't, be- I don't personally believe it's outweighed by the negative. I, I, if we could take social media away, and I know we can't, but if we could excise it from our world, we would lose certain things, forms of communication and community. But what it's shown is that it's given very bad people um, a lot more space, yeah. right? You could go to a coffee shop and meet with other people who have good, virtuous causes. You couldn't really do that if you were a Nazi. But what right. social media has given you is that forum. And you, know, you know, I'd say, Doug. It's t- to me. It's I. Th- I think. I think you're kind of both right that that there is the good it does is incredibly good for people who have no social network for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, 
in in real you know in in person. Um, or for those of us who just hate the people that we know, it. <laughs> it's a huge <laughs> lifeline, right? For people uh-huh. who are disabled and people, you know, kind of stuck in, in and kind of behind enemy lines, like a lot of us who were raised in religious, uh, you know, highly religious households were. We, I didn't have it as a kid. It, I don't know what it, I don't know how it would have been for me as a kid. But anyway, but you're right that that y- you don't know who the fuck you're really talking to out there who the fuck is really paying attention to what you're saying. Um, I, 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 yeah, I I would just say, I'll just admit I'm not a Facebook person. I've never been on Facebook. Yeah. But I I would just say, before we go down this path, if, what is your, what is the purpose of you getting into a discussion on social media? Why are you doing it? And, you know, that might be your first place to get off the, get to take a, an off ramp Mm. because, it's very difficult, as we'll discuss, to, talk, to convince someone of a different point of view via social media. And more often than not, it ends badly. Like Andy Richter said, trying to fight an internet troll is like trying to drown a vampire in your own blood. <laughs> right. This is, most, people, most people who are, in, you know, that are on Facebook or, or Twitter or Instagram to fight are there – they don't want to be convinced. They don't want to learn. They just want to obliterate. They want to pwn somebody. Right. So, so just that's laying that marker down. If, why are you well, doing it? And, and if, sure. if you, Absolutely. you want but, to try and move the needle, then. Right. So, so yeah, because all of that being said, uh, negativity uh, granted in terms of like, like the world of uh, social media – it's not going away anytime soon, nope. and many of us liked it, like it, want it, uh, and want to be able to live in that space happily. But you know, most of us, people like me, I, you know, the three of us are not going to just let you know if somebody posts something racist, we're not going to let it stand. We're not just you know going to say nothing. Yeah. So the question is, how do you approach or something like that, or if someone you know if someone's Posting some bullshit about how, you know, don't wear masks because people can't breathe in them and their oxygen level goes down and, you know, bacteria kills you or whatever. Uh, I, I personally can't let that sort of thing stand. So the question is, how do we go? And, you know, I've been very careful for m- most of my, like my Facebook. I don't let just anybody be my Facebook friend. I'm very careful about I have to have met them in person and had some interaction for almost almost exclusively. Uh, so these are people that I usually care about. Mm. So I, you know, I want this to go well. So I think, uh, you know, starting with what I said before, which was, uh, you know, don't lecture them, ask questions. That's a good way. That's a good way to start. I mean, hopefully, if they're your friends on Facebook, you've established some level of rapport of trust to some extent. Mm-hmm. That doesn't that doesn't always work, but hopefully, uh, I think another. I think one of the most powerful things you can do, if you want others to hear you and listen to you, is admit when they have a good point. When you uh, and really look for ways that they're right, because uh, there's nothing that's more that that leads to more trust than when you are willing to do what you're asking of them. You know what I mean? So even I say even go as far as to look for ways that you can adjust your perspective based on good points that they have, because they, their overarching point might be wrong. My, and it might be very, de- you know, deleterious to, to other people. But in the course of your discussion, they may have wonderful, they, you know, they may have good points. So I look very, I look for those uh, because there's, it's such a wonderful, powerful tool. Yeah, I've done the same thing. It's, it's very disarming if, if, you know, it makes them, definitely makes people feel heard. Right. And, and, and people feeling heard is incredibly important. It's so, so, so powerful and so important um, because, yeah, you're asking them to hear you. So it, it's the only way that's going to work is if they trust that you, you're going to hear them as well. Yeah. Um, when, you know, so there are other things. I think that's a good 
place to start. But I think that also we need to remember that we can have bad ideas too. Just because we're woke as fuck doesn't mean that we can't be we we can't be wrong. Like I had to learn a lot of uh, a lot of stuff before I understood why Black Lives Matter is good, and you know, like I you know I I was raised white in Utah. I had racism in me sort of it was just implanted there by providence right it wasn't and, taught and to me or whatever it was just part of how i came up as you passed through your 20s and 30s you probably were very, like a lot of us were were very convinced of yourself that i'm not a racist like right I, because here's the thing i am definitely relative to my my parents and my church i am definitely not racist right right but that doesn't mean I'm not a racist. It just means I'm on the I'm a little closer to the good end of things on the continuum, and and it is a it's a journey, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, and so each step along the way that I have come in getting a little bit less racist mm -hmm. has required me to confront myself about things that made me very very uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. there's a there especially for white people in this country, especially for men and straight people and cis you know cis people in this country there is you know as a straight white man i get to feel comfortable a lot mm -hmm. and i think there's this sense that if something is making me uncomfortable there's this uh, uh, uh subconscious thing that happens where i in, I insist and I, I, I suddenly jump to, well, this must be wrong because of how uncomfortable it makes me feel mm. about me. Mm. And that's, that's a totally natural thing to have happen. What we need to realize is our level of comfort is getting in the way of us actually hearing people. Mm. And, and it's getting in the way of, our, of good cognition. So if we as you know, f skeptics and free thinkers are going to actually be live up to those ideals of, of, of healthy skepticism and, and good free thought, we're going to have to take some steps. And I think the, a lot of those steps are things like are to do with learning how to separate our beliefs from our sense of who we are so that we're not, uh, so that we can be less uh, defensive and more curious when it comes to someone challenging our beliefs so that when I, you know, when I was in high school, I remember one time thinking, I remember me having the thought, Oh, black people are more racist than white people because I was in high school and somebody yelled, I hate white people. <laughs> and I thought, well, I've never heard anyone overtly yell. I hate black people in this hallway. So obviously I'm the oppressed one. Well, I've since learned a lot. But, you know, the, that really challenged well, my sense of you know who what? I that's was. That's me. That was my fault. I shouldn't have yelled that. I was yeah, just, I honestly <laughs> think you shouldn't yeah. have, but that's okay. I, I have blood uh, sugar problems, and uh, <laughs> I would like to t take a mulligan on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I just wanted to get to one story that I, that, that I encountered recently in which a friend of mine had posted a, a, th a post about on, on Facebook – and this is not a guy I know well, but it is a guy who over the years we have sort of – and we disagree on so many points. He leans much more right-wing than I do – than left-wing, uh, which is a huge point of disagreement. He posts things from fucking Prager University and oh. Jordan Peterson and stuff right. sometimes. However, he really does try to see – to to – when when he's called out gently, he really does work to try and understand things. So he posted a thing about how he was sad to see all of these, you know, Confederate monuments, monuments being torn down because it's, you know, we're losing our history or whatever. Right. And I made on that thing some of the points that we talked about uh, uh, in your segment, Uncle Mark, about the same thing. About, yeah, Brigham Young statue. You know, this isn't, yeah. th this isn't how we mark, mark, mark history. This isn't how we remember history. This is just who we venerate. Yeah. And, that, and these guys aren't worthy of that veneration. Right. And it hurts people. And the thing is that because we had built up a trusting rapport, 
uh, over the years and because we had listened to each other a lot. He didn't, he didn't make any comment on that thread then, but he texted me weeks later, like a week and a half later, and said, hey, I think I'm coming around to your way of thinking on that, hmm. which I think is amazing, and I'm just holding that out as proof that it can happen, and, uh, and, and so I gloated a lot in the text back to him. <laughs> do, you, do you want to name him? Let's shame him. <laughs> Let's dox that motherfucker. Right. Here's his address. Let me look that yeah. up. Well, I think, and I, I think that's, Dan, that's really, that's great. And it's important. And, and there are examples of that having, you know, you're not the only one, but you're a rare, a more rare occurrence. Um, and it's, it, it takes a tremendous amount of patience and a tremendous amount of self-control. And, you know, I, when, you know, I don't, I like to consider myself, you know, so quote unquote woke, but I know that I have miles and miles to go. Mm. But why I, I would consider myself on the end of the spectrum that I'm happier about is because I'm willing to do that. You can challenge yeah. my beliefs. You can, you can you know, ask me to explain myself or make, make my argument, and I'll do it. And at the, at, the, at the end of that process, if I have, have a different conclusion, then that's growth and that's good. But most of think, the – what's that? Well, I, I, want, I want to underscore that and just say that, look – because I, I see where you're going, I think, which is that you're going to say something about most people aren't there. But let me tell you something. Leading by example is the best thing you can do. Truly. but but it, Be that person. Be okay with changing your mind. But, it, you know, I would say... That's a hero. It's, it yeah, is incumbent on us as people who are trying to be woke, if not there yet, that... Um, and I know that's a very overused term, but I think everyone understands what I'm trying to say. The, you could say the, enlightened. That's a yeah, good enlightened. Thank you. Um, is that, you know, we've made this decision internally that we're going to be willing to change. And so we have to have the patience. It's, very, it's not very often that somebody's saying, you know, all lives matter or saying, you know, taking down Confederate monuments is erasing our history. These people haven't made that decision yet. So, you know, we're the ones who have to be patient. We're the ones yep. who have to be – and it's a fucking burden. Because sometimes yeah, you just want to yell. In the skeptical community, we've been used to that our whole lives, especially if right. we're raised around religion. I mean, I'm a queer person. My my right to draw breath is questioned on a constant basis by by people on social media, right? Yeah, um, totally. And so I would just say, look, it's I, Dan, I take every point you're making, and I think they're all excellent. It It is predicated on a couple things. One is the w knowing if the person on the other end of the conversation is an honest broker. And Absolutely. You know that you'll know that better on Facebook with these Facebook friends slash relationships you have than I will say on Twitter where, you know, arguments are are fortune cookie length and right. you don't know who you're really talking to on the other end uh, right. necessarily. And they're just people they're just shitty people that want to be trolls and start fights. Right. Yeah. And I think you uh, you should only continue in these endeavors if you are convinced that the other person is operating in good faith. But I, I think will that's, a, that's I, vital. I will tell you, too, that because I, I do the, the emails for the show as well, right. uh, there have been several examples where people write in and, you know, apparently we get things wrong once in a while. What the fuck is with that? I mean, you guys. And so people <laughs> right. will write in once in a while. And, and, you know, sometimes they're very, very cool. A guy just wrote in recently about uh, 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 in, uh, an issue about polyamory, and I won't go into it, but felt like we kind of got something wrong many, 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 many shows ago when we were talking about polygamy. Huh. And, uh, and he was completely right. And I he was very nice about it. And I ab said, absolutely, you know what? We'll, we, you're correct. We'll do better. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. And there's times that some uh, people have wrote in, written in angrily. And somebody wrote in angrily about another issue, and I won't say what it was, and uh, we had, I think we had gotten something wrong, but certainly that was not the intent. And so they wrote this really red hot email and just said, you know, don't ever fucking talk about that again. How dare you? Right. So I wrote back and said, well, hey, that's not very fair. You, you should, if you've listened to the show, you know our hearts. You know we're not out to co we're not out to cause harm to de to, to good people, right? Um, yeah, just shitty people. Yeah, just shitty people and shitty ideas. So tell <laughs> tell me what we got wrong, and they and we ended up in this really positive dialogue, and yeah. uh, and I think they came to the conclusion that there was no ill intent, and I made you know guarantees to them that that we will 
make a concerted effort to do better on that particular subject. And and that was a very those have been very positive conversations. And the email is a little bit different than social media, right? Yeah, and that's I, I think that's a valid point. We should consider the fact you you need to consider the venue because you're you're right. You're not going to be able to have this kind of uh, of of long form uh, discussion that that leads to pro, to like profitable uh, discourse on Twitter. You're just not going to be able to. Yeah, and Grinder. So, I've tried so probably it. It's just, really <laughs> tough. <laughs> right. Yeah. So probably disengage is is the best thing to do there, or just or just shame people. I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the the fact that it might be possible to have good discourse even online because I know a lot of people don't believe in it. Yeah. Okay, that's all. I don't know. <laughs> we we'll solved try. it. <laughs> we licked it, guys. We fixed it. It's all better now. <laughs> nice. Well, well, at Dan on Twitter and Facebook and yeah, yell exactly. At him, yell at him why he's wrong about this. If you can find me, get me. That's right. All right. Well, cool. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, you guys. Yep. All right, let's, let's move on. Let's move on.